Thank you for supporting Honest News Network. Well, let's uh, let's open up in uh, in prayer and ask the Lord to help us. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your love and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for your help and helping us to deliver your word to your people. We ask, Lord, that you will bless and anoint, Lord, as, this, as we minister your word and teach your word. We pray, Lord, that your people will be anointed as well to receive and to understand truth so that we can understand, Lord, that which we've been apprehended for, that we might apprehend, that we might obtain, that we might attain to what you have apprehended us for. We ask that you bless, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So in the previous, in the previous lesson, in the previous lesson, we learned that there was different levels of knowledge or different levels of, of knowing. Uh, and, and here we see there is gnosis, and this is in the Greek, gnosis, and then there's genosko, there's also epigenosko here, but there's also an epignosis. We won't look at that as much right now. The first no has to do with knowledge, has to do with uh, having knowledge. To know by knowledge or to know by uh, information. That would be like reading the Bible, reading the scriptures. That would be your first no, would be gnosis. Uh, gnosis. Uh, now this would be um, the same thing as logos. Okay? Gnosis. But then you move on to epinosis and that's and it's not on, we don't have that in the list here, but epinosis would be, um, would be to become uh, acquainted with uh, knowledge and to be, um, but not on an intimate level. In other words, you're getting your feet wet. You're kind of getting to know, getting to uh, know the truth, okay? But when you get into the area of knowing, in the Greek word genosko, and even getting into epigenosko, now you're getting more closer to an intimate knowing, more fully, epigenosko. This is, this is the goal here, okay? This is what every one of us should be after right here. Epigenosco. So you can see there's levels here. A lot of folks stay in this level here. I have knowledge, but they never move on into the second area here to move on into a relationship with the truth. Genosko is the knowledge of the truth. Having knowledge, understanding knowledge, and then becoming intimate with the truth or with the knowledge. Okay? And uh, we're going to look at this in the, in the scriptures. Uh, we look at 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians uh, chapter... Uh, 13 verse 12 Paul the Apostle says for now we see through a glass darkly but then face to face now I know in part but then shall I know even as also I am known notice Philippians chapter 3 verse 10 below Paul says that I may know him 
Notice that word, no. And the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Paul is using the same word here in both instances, both verses. We find that in these both these letters, Paul is using this word right here. He's using the, the second one here. So Paul is using this Greek word, genosko, okay? And as you can see, Paul is striving. He is reaching for, he is stretching for the ultimate. This epigenosko is what he is after, but he's not mentioning epigenosko in the, uh, in the first or excuse me, in the uh, second verse, Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, Paul does not mention epigenosco. He does not ent uh, uh, mention an intimate knowing. Now, whether Paul understood this level of knowing the Lord at this point, we don't know, because there's no indication that Paul does understand it. Remember, Paul, just like us, you know, started out as a babe, and he had to grow too. So, we see here that Paul the Apostle is dealing with this Greek word, genosko, but not epigenosko. I think it's important to understand that because Paul was reaching for something. He was stretching for something. He said, not as though I had already attained, but this one thing I do Forgetting those things which are behind, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now, Paul had knowledge, and Paul had an understanding of knowledge, right? He had gnosis and genosco. But this is what Paul the Apostle had yet to understand, that there was something more intimate. Okay? Something more intimate here. And he doesn't realize this, he doesn't understand this, until the book of, uh, uh, the book of uh, 1 Corinthians, or the letter of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Which is quite interesting because I believe 1 Corinthians uh, was written before Philippians. Now, so it, it could be that Paul understood it, but he didn't make mention of it. Because in the first Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12, he does speak of epigenosco. But in Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, he's not speaking here of epigenosco. Not sure why. Uh, we can see in one instance, Paul is saying, not as though I'm already perfect. Uh, but then he goes on to say in the next verse, as many of us that are perfect. So what is this that Paul was seeing? What was he? He was struggling. There's no question about it. Paul was struggling, and he was expressing that through the Greek uh, language. Uh, he was trying to help us to understand what he was going through, just like in, in Romans chapter 6, uh, in chapter 7. He tells us, he says there's a, a struggle going on here. There's a war going on within me. When I would do good, evil is present. So now, moving beyond that, he's not struggling so much in that area, but now he's struggling with this level of knowledge Folks, I want to encourage you to move beyond just having knowledge, gnosis. Move beyond that and, and begin to understand the Word of God. Begin to understand truth. Get into the area of, of genosco, okay? But this is the ultimate. This, this is what every single one of us should be after, right here. To know fully to know fully, epigenosco, completely, 
And this, I guess you could say, is also that word that Paul was speaking of, the word perfection that he used in uh, Philippians chapter 3. He speaks of perfection, not as though I'm already perfect. And uh, so there's, a, there's, definitely a, there's definitely a struggle going on in Paul's experience. Just like all of us, I think, we all struggle. You got to remember, Paul didn't have the New Testament, right? God used him to give us much of the New Testament, as far as the letters and the epistles. So Paul was strictly depending upon the Holy Spirit to give him understanding, to give him revelation of, uh, and understanding. And then he conveyed that to you and I through his letters. So this growing knowledge that Paul was understanding, he, he was talking about epigenosco, fully knowing the Lord, okay? But also that word perfection, which means to consummate. There's no question in my mind that Paul the Apostle was, was reaching for something. He even said he was. He says, I'm... I'm stretching, I'm reaching, I'm pressing toward that mark. He was reaching after something. And he realized he had been apprehended by the Lord. And he said, not as though I already have apprehended for what I've been apprehended for. So he realized there was something he was reaching for. There's something more than just having knowledge. That even Paul understood that knowledge puffeth up. And he knew God gave him a thorn in the flesh because he had much knowledge. He had much gnosis. Uh, but here, one verse we find he's using this word, genosco, to understand knowledge. And that's where he's saying, for now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part that word know, in part, that word know, is genosco. It's not epigenosco. So when he says we know in part, he's saying we don't have this yet. We don't have epigenosco yet. We don't have known or knowing fully. You got to appreciate the Apostle Paul. You got to appreciate his his hunger, his love for the Lord. You got to appreciate the hunger that Paul had to go from a Pharisee, um, you know, a persecutor of the church, what he called the chiefest of sinners. To go from that to being so in love with the Lord and so hungry for the Lord and to become the 12th apostle to, to, replace, uh, uh, to replace Judas. Wow, God is just so wise, isn't he? To, who would have ever thought, who would ever thought that someone like Saul that was a persecutor of the church that actually stood at the and gave his consent. He gave his consent for them to stone Stephen. And now we see this man that's been totally changed, totally converted, and he's his his pursuit is to know the Lord. Wow. If that doesn't give you hope, brothers and sisters, if that, it does, if that doesn't inspire you, oh, blessed be his name. Oh, glory to the Lamb. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God in heaven. Praise you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. See why it's so important to study, folks? It really helps you to understand what's going on here. Oh, Lord. So many. Now, I'll tell you, for the most part, 
babes have a knowledge. They're, they're acquiring a knowledge. Gnosis. They're acquiring knowledge. But babes don't understand knowledge. Children do. Moving into children, you start understanding things. You start understanding the Word of God. You start understanding truth. But listen, folks. If you're going to be in the bride, if you're going to become the wife of the Lamb, going to become one of those sons that's placed as a son, and, and he's not ashamed to call you a brother, you're going to have to move into this area. Epigenosco. To know him fully. And that's exactly what we see. That's exactly what we see here in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. That's what we're really after, isn't it? How many want to see his face? How many want to see Jesus? Now I know in part, Janoska. Now I know in part. I'm, I'm beginning to understand the truth. I'm beginning to understand the word. I'm becoming acquainted with the truth. And uh, he goes on to say, but shall, uh, now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. Did you know the word known is epigenosco? So, where we see the first no, no in part, that is genosco, to understand knowledge. But then shall I know epigenosco, even as also I am known, epigenosco. Do you see what's going on here? I hope you can appreciate this lesson, brothers and sisters. Because I think this really helps us to see the struggle, the, 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 the stretching, the reaching, the hunger, the thirst that uh, Apostle Paul had. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now we sing that song, Oh, I want to see him. Look upon his face, there to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. Now just listen to that part of the song. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. And there it is, right there. But then, face to face. For now we see through a glass darkly but then face to face, face to face. Now Paul ends up going to the next verse and we find that Paul's talking about charity. He's talking about the love of God in that whole chapter in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, but he says the greatest of these is charity. And as I've already shared with you, charity is not God's love. It's God's love in action. That's what it means to grow up. No longer babes and children, but you grow up to fully develop, to be an adult, and now it's love in action. It's not just love in word, but it's love in deed and in truth. Are you listening? Praise the Lord. You do very well to go and study both of these chapters and get a context for this lesson. If you go and read 1 Corinthians chapter 13 
and then Philippians chapter 3, and then you listen to this lesson, I think you'll get much more out of it. Because this is basically just giving you a nugget out of these two chapters, out of these two uh, portions of Scripture. This is a nugget. This is like a, a, a jewel. This is like a treasure that's in the, in the midst of all this other wealth of, of God's riches, of his, of, his, uh, of his grace and his mercy and his goodness. You know, my job is not to do it for you, brothers and sisters. My job is to get you excited and get you interested in studying. My job is to get you, uh, to, to whet your appetite, to get you into his word, to get you studying the scriptures. I can't do it for you. I mean, you're going to have to be a doer of his word. You're going to have to apply the truth to your own life. Now, I can, I can give you something to, you know, to uh, give you incentive, something to help you to uh, have a desire to want to do it, uh, but I can't do it for you. And God himself can't do it for you. So, you know, it, it's, it's up to you. Do you understand that? It really is up to you. Praise the Lord. And I think that's really the whole thing right there, is understanding it is up to you. It's, it's your choice. What you're going to do with what's been given to you, what's been made available. And I believe that the Lord has given us great understanding. Um, I think he's giving us... Um, you know, I think the Lord has really blessed this ministry. Um, and so you can enter into that. You know, you can enter into another, another man's labors. Praise the Lord. You don't have to start, you know, in a shallow place. You don't have to start in a place that's off and away from the truth. You, you, you can start right here. You can start digging right here. And you're already digging where you already know there's treasure. You know what I mean, brothers and sisters? You don't have to go digging and trying to find treasure. You just dig the treasure out. Dig, dig the golden nuggets out. Guilt, you know, just start digging right here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, the quarry's already been provided. All you got to do is start just digging right here. And you know you're going to have gold and you know you're going to have precious stones. You know you're going to have silver. You know you're going to have treasure right here in this spot because we've already revealed to you some of that treasure. There's more. Just, just keep digging right here. If you'll just dig right here. This is where Paul the Apostle this is really where he was before he, before he went to be with the Lord. This is really where he was at. He was, he was reaching for, he was stretching for the ultimate. He, that's what he was, that's what he was living for. That was what his whole life was about, was to know even as he was known. To be, to, to know the Lord even as he is known. And he even said, he says, we shall be like the Lord, for we shall see him as he is. Amen. Oh, blessed be his name. So I hope something that was shared with you was challenging to you. Uh, we don't have the best equipment or the best uh, technology here as far as, you know, you look at some of these these mega churches, and they have all this expensive equipment and expensive elaborate, uh, you know, screens and everything. We've got a whiteboard and a computer and a, and a microphone and a camera. But one thing we do have that they don't have, and that is the truth. Amen. The truth. The Lord reminds me constantly. You know, Jesus was born in a manger. He was born in a manger. He had no place to lay his head. Amen. Um, 
And as far as the quality of the microphone, I, I'm using the microphone on the camera. So uh, that's why we're not using the other, cam uh, the other microphone right now because we're away from the desk and we're using the whiteboard. So uh, if, if, if that's bothering you, I apologize. But I, I trust it'll be uh, sufficient for you to get the Word of God. I I'll tell you, I've been blessed over the years by messages you could barely hear of, of men of God of years gone by that, you know, you could barely make out what they were saying, but you were just hanging on to every little word. Just <clears throat> praise God. Thank you, Lord. God's been good, brothers and sisters. He's been good to us. To give us the truth, to give us a real chance at becoming all that he has envisioned, that all that he is, uh, all that he has provided for us to become. He's been good to us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well. The Lord willing, we're going to continue to be giving you more lessons as the Lord leads. Uh, and I believe this is, I think this will inspire some of you. I think some of you will, will uh, appreciate this. Glory to God.